Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Grab yourself a cup of tea and let's talk some boxing. Now, Joshua Boatze versus Blocknicks. This was a very entertaining fight to cap off fight camp. And actually, Eddie Hearn seems to believe that Boatze is ready for maybe a Dimitri Bivol now. And the big opportunities could be coming his way. Now, this was the breakout fight. This was the fight that was supposed to represent the biggest challenge to Joshua Boatze in his career so far. And it did prove to be the case because Bolotniks did bring it. He did catch Boatze early as well. And Boatze did deal well with that, although he did stand still a bit when he got caught with those punches. So you wonder if there is someone like a Bivol who is able to step in behind his attacks, use angles, and has that punch variation. Things could be a bit different, so he definitely needed this fight, and maybe one more before looking at a Bivol fight. I don't think that he's ready for that just yet, I think that he's going to be ready, but I think maybe one or two more is going to be very important for Joshua Boatze. Nevertheless, this was a good performance against a tough opponent. I mean, this guy wasn't going anywhere easily, he wasn't just going to lay down. I mean, look what he had to take in order to stay in there. And he just worked and worked away until ultimately he could not do any more. It was tough, it was rough, Boatze punches very hard and we saw that. We also got to see that Joshua Boatze carries his power late as well. He doesn't just punch hard for four or five rounds, he carries it late into the fight. And at the end of the day, Bolotniks was exhausted, he was tired. When that punch landed, I think that was just it. It was that exhaustion and fatigue also. It wasn't just necessarily the power in that punch, it was just everything caught up to him when it landed, and that was it. But he done well to stick in there, and was extremely brave. Now, a lot could be made of the fact that he was 18-5 and five going into this one, and if that's the record of the guy he's fighting now to get him to Bivol, and you look at Bivol an undefeated world champion, then you wonder... Is this that fight that is going to get him to that point, or does he need an in-between fight? I don't necessarily agree that we have to look at records in order to do that. Just look at the fights, look at what the opponent is able to represent when it comes to the challenge in the ring. And we saw what Belotniks brought to this boxing ring. And I think that he does still need one more based on that, but regardless of the record, that doesn't really come into it for me. I think that he does still need one more, but that is based off of what happened in this particular contest. Buatsi does sometimes stand still too much. I think he's too static and that won't benefit him when he does get to world level. I think that also he doesn't move his head enough. He's quite static as well. He does get caught when he comes in and that was the key for Bolotniks, I think. I think that Bolotniks wanted to catch him coming in. He wanted to walk him onto something because he knew he couldn't necessarily fight fire with fire and come out on top. And if it was turned into a boxing match, Buatsi is still going to have the edge. So what does he do? That actually shows a lot of intelligence and experience on the behalf of Bolotniks to figure out a game plan and understand that Buatsi is the better boxer, the better fighter up close. So what does he do? He tries to catch him in that mid-range when he is coming in, trying to break up the work of Buatsi, because if Buatsi is able to get behind that jab, then move into range and work up close, he's having it all his own way. But if Bolotniks is able to break up that work by disrupting the jab and breaking up his work before he gets to that close range, then he is able to have a chance in this contest, and that was what he done. So he did do well in that respect, and it does show that this is an experienced opponent in front of Buatzi, something that Buatzi needed to get to that next point. Bolotniks, I think that he did himself a lot of favours. He'll get another fight based off of that one, because he's made a lot of friends. I'd like to see him in another fight. I'd like to see him in there, maybe with Anthony Yard, maybe with Lyndon Arthur, some more British fighters. There are opportunities for Buatzi to face those guys before a Bivol as well. And Anthony Yard, that was a big fight that was built up, although it looks like he will be going towards the Lyndon Arthur rematch. So that's the big one at the moment this year. Maybe next year they could move on to an all-British showdown. I do like to see that because it's great getting experience off of guys like Belotniks, 
But what I also like to see is them go in there with a young, hungry challenger, just like themselves, because that gives them experience as well. They get the experience in ringcraft from these older guys, the guys who have been in it, and the guys who've been there and done it, against tough oppositions. But they also get something from beating someone who is undefeated like they are, or not necessarily even just undefeated, but looking to get to the point where they want to go, and a rival in that sense, because if you look at how that helped develop Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, George Groves, James DeGale, those kind of fights did get them ready for something that might happen later on, like being in a fight where there is a little bit of needle in the build-up, they're trash talking, they're going back and forth, this is their patch, they don't want this guy coming onto their patch and taking everything away from them, they're the prospect, they're the next big thing, who does this guy think he is? coming onto their patch and saying, no, you're not the next big thing, I am. And that kind of dynamic has played well in the George Grove situation with James DeGale, Dillian White, Anthony Joshua, and so on. So that could be important because then it gets them ready to deal with those kind of mind games building up, the back and forth, and then when they're in the fight, making sure they don't get too emotionally involved because that will tire them, that will fatigue them. It will also mean they could leave themselves open to a counter if the other guy is more precise with his punches and is able to stay calm and not let the mind games get to them. So that can also be just as important as fighting the guys with the experience to get them to that next level, although for Buatzi at the moment, Lyndon Arthur and Anthony Yard are tied up. There are some other fighters that he could explore, but those guys seem to be going towards one another instead of Joshua Buatzi. So Buatzi is on a different route compared to them at the moment, but they could collide at some point. I do like Bivol versus Buatzi, just not next. I think that Buatzi could do with maybe one more, and then that will get him to where he needs to go. A little bit more experience. I mean, they could chuck him in with Bivol next. It would be tough, and he would have to learn on the job, kind of like he did against Bolotniks, but in a higher intensity environment. Maybe that could be a good thing for Buatsi to see what he truly is made of. But anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Buatsi, 11th round, knockout over Bolotniks, and could move on to a Bivol fight next. Guys, drop your thoughts on this in the comments below. Also, leave a like and grab that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.